Hello everyone, welcome to RDSC CBSC. This is Ravinder Dundra. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about a new conservatism after 1858. But before that, let me revise what we have seen in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we have discussed about liberal nationalism. In that, we have seen the meaning of liberalism and we have also seen what is political liberalism, what is economic liberalism, as well as we have also seen about Zorbarin or Customs Union. In continuation with that, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about a new conservatism of the 1815. What do you mean by this conservatism? Then, what happened after 1815? These were the two main things which we are going to discuss in this lecture. So, first, let me explain you what is this conservatism means. Conservatism means, simply you can say, those people who follow particular traditions and customs and those who never prefer any kind of change or even if they prefer, they prefer something, a gradual change to a quicker change. Gradual change means the change should be very very slower rather than quicker change. That means either they don't want any change in the society or they want a slower change. So those people who believe traditions, who follow customs and who never support for the change in the society, those people we call them as conservatives. Then who were these conservatives? What they were trying to restore? What they were trying to bring in Europe? Basically, these conservatives they were trying to restore or they were trying to bring back some of the things like they wanted to bring back this monarchy form of government. Then they also want to give power to this church. Then at the same time, they also wanted to bring back this social hierarchies. So you know what is this monarchy? What is this monarchy again? You know, a rule by a single person. Then they also wanted to bring back this power to this church. Then they also wanted to bring back this uh, something known as social hierarchies. That means again they wanted to bring social order in the society. Again, the first state, second state, third state. Then how it is possible to bring back this or uh, how it is possible to restore these things is they were trying to bring back these things by using a modern army and at the same time these conservatives they have decided to abolish this feudal system. By abolishing this feudal system, by using this modern army, they were trying to restore monarchy, church as well as social hierarchies. Then, who are these conservatives? Conservatives basically, you all know in the last lecture I have told, from 1804 to 1815, the Europe was under the control of this Napoleon or you can say Napoleonic code or civil code of 1804 was in the functioning or it was functioning in Europe. Then in the year 1815, this Napoleon was defeated by four European powers. They were one is Britain, Russia, Prussia as well as Austria. So these were the four European powers which have collectively defeated this Napoleon in the year 1815. Then, as soon as they have defeated, they, try, they were trying to follow this conservatism. Then, all these four of these European powers, Britain, Russia, Russia, Austria, what they have done is that they all have met in a place known as this Vienna. And this Vienna, it is located in present day this Austria. And after a meeting there, they all come, they all have come to an agreement that they simply call it as Treaty of Vienna 1815. After defeating Napoleon, these four European powers, Britain, Russia, Russia, Austria, what they have done is that they went to a place, Vienna, which is located in Austria in the year 1815, and which we call it as this Treaty of Vienna. Treaty means they simply can say a formal agreement, a formal agreement between countries or between persons. So, Treaty of Vienna, agreement between these four countries in a place known as Vienna in the year 1815. Then, who is the head of this Treaty of Vienna? The head of this Treaty of Vienna is 
Austrian Chancellor Duke Metternich. Duke Metternich means Duke in the sense in the last class itself I told Duke means simply it's a is a ruler. Then all these four European powers, Britain, Russia, Russia, Austria, under the head of under the heads of this uh, Duke Metternich, they are met in a place known as Vienna. Then after that there were certain kind of agreements which were made in this Treaty of Vienna. What were these agreements were? Well, first and foremost thing, the Bourbon dynasty was restored to power. That means you all know to which country this Bourbon dynasty belongs to. It belongs to France. But as I told, after 1789, after this French Revolution, this dynasty got collapsed, or you can say it was destroyed. But again, after this 1815, they have brought back this. Bourbon dynasty. That is the first change which was made in this Treaty of Vienna. Then, second thing, France lost territories occupied by Napoleon, which also means that when Napoleon was ruling this France and all other parts of this Europe, what he has done is that he occupied some of the places in Europe. Now, what happened is that France lost all its territories. Third thing, a series of states were set up. On the boundaries of France to prevent its expansion. That means, for example, if this is France, this and this country is France, what they have done is that they have set up certain states on the boundaries of this France. Why they have set up this on this boundaries of France is that they don't want to expand France in future. That means they don't want to spread this French area. France kingdom. So that is why they have set up some of the states. Then the fourth thing is that different different kingdoms were set up in entire Europe. For example, kingdom of Netherlands, Genoa, Austria, Prussia. So different different kingdoms were set up in Europe. Then finally, the main intention of this Treaty of Vienna or the, this the main intention of the Conservatives was to restore this. Monarchy form of government. As I said in the beginning, they wanted to restore this monarchy. So the main aim of this conservatives after this treaty of Vienna was to restore this monarchy form of government. So these were some of the changes which were brought after this treaty of Vienna. And at the same time, these conservatives, what they have also done is that they were trying to impose something known as this censorship. Which are which I have also explained in the previous video. What do you mean by this censorship? So again, these conservatives they started expanding or even say increasing this censorship. Then at the same time, what they have also done is that they have imposed very strict restrictions, saying that there is no freedom of press, or you can say they cannot publish whatever they freely want to publish. So by seeing all these activities of conservatives. Some of the liberals, or you can say, all these liberals about whom we have discussed in the last lecture, these liberals, they were very afraid of these conservatives. Therefore, what they have done is that these liberals, they started going to the underground. They started going to the underground. That means they were afraid by seeing that the activities of these conservatives. So therefore. They went into underground. But even after going into underground, some of the people, some of the revolutionaries, what they have done, they have still started continuing this revolution. So in the next lecture, we will see about some of the revolutionaries. Thank you.